Hello, everybody. Welcome to another segment of our uh, Meet the Change Makers. Today, we are in conversation with the founders of uh, STEM to Inspire. Welcome, Hannah. Welcome, Heather. They're joining us uh, from uh, Virginia, right? Yes. Yeah, Northern Virginia, yeah. Northern Virginia. Cool. So uh, tell me about how your organization really started and how long have you, be, uh, you people been working with it for? So uh, I, whoever wants to go first, uh, Hannah. Um, yeah, we, we were like, oh, we don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, so we started at uh, the end of our sophomore year. So it's been about a year and a half. So we've been going for a good time. Obviously, COVID stopped up our progress a little bit. But yeah, so we started on the basis of realizing that we are in a pretty affluent area ourselves. And we know that we ourselves have a lot of STEM opportunities. And that's the reason why we've indulged in our STEM interests. You know, we are able to understand like what the different majors, what the different aspects of STEM are. And we know like what we like. But a lot of the people don't get to seek their passions and they have to go for something that's more stable or something that's like something they don't actually like and have a life that's kind of mundane. And that's why we kind of want to give those opportunities to students and give them those hands-on opportunities, especially based on like not just, you know, understanding a lecture and writing a worksheet on it, but working with the students on actually like taking charge in their life with these different STEM experiments. We all do we all do experiments from like biology microscopes to oil spills in like a little tin can. And I don't know, it's just, it's really fun to kind of work with these students and see how they can indulge in their interests as well as if we've, we've been able to do all of our lives. And to touch base to um, the first this before, question. Okay, okay, go ahead. No, no problem. Oh, sorry. For the first half of your question, how you said like how we started, we um we started in our basement basically like our we started working on our posters and oh actually our first location was in a church so we kind mm -hmm. of were trying to gear our um, target audience for um homeless shelters and okay yeah and like mm, that kind of situations and then we started gearing yeah. towards um, minorities and unrepresented communities right. So I was going to ask, uh, you mentioned about experiments, right? About uh, biological microscopes and all that kind of stuff. So uh, do you have that equipment or is that just like telling people about it? Yeah, so we do have some of that equipment ourselves because we do oh, have- Oh, nice. Yeah, we have a whole board of directors and some of them had microscopes at home. And obviously we didn't have like 15, we had one and everyone kind of shared it, but it, mm -hmm. we made it work. Um, but we also got some grant money and we're hoping to buy more supplies in order to have more engaging experiments and um, stuff like that. Right, right, right. That's, that's a little different from how other uh, STEM education organizations work because I think a lot of people work towards like, uh, tutoring and education and that kind of stuff but I think you people are very hands-on with the experiments and that thing I think really drives your people so um since the time you started how uh, much of an impact have you been able to make like, in the kind of people you have worked with and the kind of students you've worked with so tell me about the impact that you've made uh, I think we can have uh, Heather go first okay um I would say we probably interacted with maybe over 200 kids maybe just in our wow. base chapter yeah we we've had um we've worked with three individual schools and but we've had multiple sessions with the schools and then um we also have about seven other chapters 10 actually oh, 10 10 other chapters <laughs> across um internationally we have one in haiti as well and so oh. We're all, yeah, so we're also interacting with students across the borders as well. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, uh, go ahead. Oh, no problem. I was just going to kind of reiterate. Yeah, we have worked with students like all over the United States. It goes from New York to California and obviously to Haiti. So we make sure that each of our chapters have our lesson plans as well so that we're able to aid them and making workshops a little bit more accessible to them as well, even though we're so far apart. Right. So speaking of chapters, so you have chapters in different states, right? Okay. So how do you coordinate between the equipment that you have to get and the kind of, uh, uh, you know, the experiments that you really have to plan and how do you coordinate all that stuff across uh, the country? 
Yeah, so we basically use Google Hangouts. Uh, any form of communication is obviously viable, but we use Google Hangouts to kind of communicate with each chapter. Um, and we try to just have calls with them, regular calls to make sure that we're kind of active, making sure our communication is st stable. And we have a board of directors that's mainly for I mean, primarily just for making lesson plans and mm -hmm. they'll make lesson plans from different aspects of STEM. And we share those lesson plans with those chapters to ensure that they don't have to go through the whole process of making it and, you know, validating it and make sure it's, we just try to make sure that they have those materials. Um, and again, with our grant money, we hope to give them money in order to them to like allocate those funds towards supplies that they don't have to fundraise for. We, yeah, so we were able to give them money so they don't have to go through the whole like car wash, yeah. bake sale process. Yeah, 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 that I believe is a hiccup whenever somebody wants to like start some sort of initiative or project, they don't have enough funds to like, you know, start things up. So the fact that you guys are like helping them out financially, that's, uh, I think, a very motivating for them to pursue whatever they want to. So um, let's talk about why you feel STEM particularly is important in today's generation and time and why it has significant advantages and benefits as compared to you know the non-scientific uh, or technological subject like, you know liberal arts and all that kind of stuff uh, let's have Hannah go first uh, so um yeah I I think the reason why we target underrepresented students and disadvantaged students entirely is because they don't have the opportunity to, again, go through the STEM process and understanding what their passions lie in. And the point is, like, the STEM field is obviously, their minorities are not represented enough in the STEM field, and that's mainly because they don't get those opportunities in the first place to understand what STEM is about. And that's exactly what we're trying to combat, you know, making sure that everyone has opportunity to understand the STEM field, because the the STEM field can elevate as a whole together, making sure that we have all of the brightest students and all of us have the opportunity to yeah. allocate these resources and understand how we can contribute to the STEM field all together. Mm -hmm. And Heather? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I agree along the same lines as Hannah, but a key word that I would add is um, equal opportunities because like every, I feel like everybody has opportunities, but the word like equal makes sure that everybody's on the same playing field so that way everybody can have the same resources in order to achieve their goals and the reason why we like to focus on STEM rather than other liberal subjects is because for me at least I feel like STEM can really it's like an umbrella or like a tree it really can branch out in so many different ways and like everything that you do in life is basically STEM. Yeah, I, I fully agree with what Heather said. The fact that STEM is really an umbrella. There are like so many things branching in and out of it. It's, it's absolutely fascinating how everything can be linked to a particular field of study. That's, that's really fascinating. And I personally uh, pursue, I mean, I'm going to pursue computer science. So we do understand that. We, we will go over that a little later though. So let's uh, talk about uh, the challenges that you have faced because uh, being a student-led organization at the end of the day, uh, there are drawbacks that happen, there are challenges that you have to face. So let's talk about that, uh, Heather. So I would say our biggest challenge is I feel like the adults who run the school don't really see us as a valid um, like organization since we are student led. I feel like if we were like a real company or like business then they'd be more inclined to like let us into their rooms and like work with their students. So like, I don't know, maybe they just see we're not mature enough. But, like that's definitely our biggest challenge is just getting our foot into the door. But once we are able to make those connections with the administration at our local schools and in our chapters, like their local schools, like we're just, it's set. <laughs> Yeah, I completely agree. Like, I, that's exactly what I was going to say, actually. You see so many of these clubs that come into the schools and like, um, uh, I can't even name them, but <laughs> there are a bunch yeah. of programs that the school pays for. They're like, oh, like, I'll pay for these organizations to come in. But it kind of 
disadvantages at school and having to pay for it. So we're trying to, you know, help them in that case where it's like, we will come for free, like, <laughs> and uh, we will take yeah. care of everything. Um, but most of the time, they just ignore our emails. But, <laughs> um, but it was also fundraising was probably another feat that we had to conquer because it was like, it was very hands-on fundraising before we did grants. So we had to do like, as I said before, bake sales, car washes. We did two bake sales, two car washes, mm -hmm. and we did raise money from it. But I just, um, I felt a little silly because I was like, oh, <laughs> maybe we should do a little bit more professional. But I was like, you know, like it, it is, it was a good process yeah. and a good experience to have to kind of just do hands-on fundraising and making sure that's going towards a good cause. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, financially, being independent is, I think, one of the biggest challenges anybody can face. And I fully agree with what Heather said about adults not recognizing any initiative as important as it should be. I mean, youngsters are like taking over the world right now and anybody with a thought should be respected. So uh, the last point that I really want to touch upon is your personal academic interests. And uh, since you're in high school and since you're in senior year, senior year now, um, where you look to pursue with that. So let's have Hannah go first. Yeah, so I um, intend to go pre-med and just kind of exploring the medical field. I kind of want to do something similar to STEM to inspire. Actually, I want to attend to low-income communities as a medical professional and making sure that low-income communities and even third-world countries going worldwide, making sure that they have a correct physician care curriculum and ensuring that they have medical access. Um, so it is very on topic of STEM to inspire. <laughs> um, and uh, I don't know what branch yet, but I'm aiming towards neurosurgery. That's nice. And Heather? Um, same thing. Not pre-med, though. I'm thinking about going to nursing. And then hopefully um, after I get my BSN, I would like to get my MBA. So then I can kind of tie it in together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that's pretty cool. So uh, this is going to be a very fun segment. Uh, tell me about the myth or misconceptions people generally have about STEM. Uh, let's have Heather go first. Have you met people who have had misconceptions or myths about uh, STEM? Um, I personally have not met anybody out there, but I'm sure there's like the stereotypes of how like they're super hard workers, they don't do anything, they're boring, yeah. they're dirty. I mean, like <laughs> nerdlings. <laughs> 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 yeah I, I was supposed to say that actually like they think we're nerds essentially um like there's definitely like a divide literally in high school a divide between those who like are in STEM and you know I guess like like STEM more than other subjects but in yeah. return like I, I guess we are nerds I'm just gonna own up to it at this point like <laughs> So I mean, you I'm have fine. to you have to study to get uh, to a place in life, right? You don't get things easier, so you have to take that effort, effort from your side. And I think um, I think a lot of people think Asian Asian community and um, Asian kids are always inclined towards either medicine or you know uh, engineering or that kind of things. And I think that's not very true because. Um, people should not have that pressure on them. A, they should not have that pressure that since you belong to a certain race, you should be taking that kind of course. But um, and at the same time, I would really want to see more of other communities being a part of you know, this field. And I think you guys have been doing a great job so far. Thank uh, you. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, what I think is like, when people like us, take a step in the right direction and start, you know, supporting people around us, it really makes an impact. And even if it's like, you know, 100 kids, 50 kids, or even if it's like 10 kids, it, it does make an impact. And um, I'm so happy to hear all of you have uh, touched upon like 200 kids. That is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah, as a part of an impact. That's super cool. So is there any closing comments that you want to make? I would just like to say to your viewers or <laughs> people who read your blog, um, like if you're interested in starting an organization like this, just go for it. Like, yeah, it might seem really hard at first, but it's honestly really fun, especially if you have like a good group of um, coworkers, I guess, or your cohorts. It's really fun. 
yeah, yeah. you're right by mind actually <laughs> <laughs> I know like again we said the barrier of like adults and realizing that oh maybe you're not validated enough in order to do this work but in return you are you are like you have the power to do this and even though you're young don't second guess yourself there's so many opportunities that you can do yourself and having this start will be perfect because if this is your start you're gonna have a better future so it just sets you up for success yeah and uh, do you plan to continue working in uh, stem to inspire even as you go into college or are you like planning to hand this over to a certain group of people and then just kind of diverge from the organization so we'll probably hand over our base chapter which is in Burke, to um the rising seniors but i personally plan on pursuing this in college as well Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. Whatever prospective colleges we go to, all of our rising college freshmen right now all have decided that we're all going to just make chapters wherever we go. So it's even better because yeah. we can branch out even more. So it's perfect. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Okay. Um, thank you so much for being on Teens Talk today. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to the both of you. And I feel so happy to see the impact that you guys have made so far. It, and I feel empowered to see people like you do so much of work in our communities and I think we need more people like you. Thank you Thank so you. much. You too. I really appreciate you, you know, uplifting these organizations because they definitely need to be heard. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Thank you Thank so you. much. No problem. Have a good day.